Hello, this is Telford Thomas of Thomas Computers, and I just want to inform the community of the latest and greatest scam out there. If uh, anything pops up on your computer informing you to call someone, uh, please don't call that number because those are the hackers. Uh, they have charges and fees up to $275 or, or more, and so you don't want to get caught up in that. Uh, the best advice uh, I can give you is to turn your computer off and come see me at Thomas Computers. Yo, what up? This is DJ Chip, and you are watching New Way to Live Network. Bam. In order for, for us to really understand uh, the question of the role of uh, guns and violence uh, to gangs, um, we have to be realistic and, and accept the history uh, of this country and the history of gangs in this country. Um, America has a love affair with guns. And historically, the powerful has used guns to maintain and expand their influence and control. So the connection is a psychological connection between, uh, now, when the powerless get a gun, they're just as powerful as the powerful with the gun. Uh, that was a joke that was once said that uh, people get worried when the rabbit get the gun. And the point of it is that when, when you got the gun, and I don't, you feel very powerful. But when I get the gun, and we're both equally powerful, then that changes the psychological dynamics. a volunteer here at the Liberty Theater. Uh, we have many, many programs for children. Uh, I'm going to highlight just one for you this afternoon, and that's the performance choir. This is a group of children who come together every Monday night for one hour to sing. We have an instructor, uh, a well-trained uh, music director who comes to teach the children the songs. They all get lead parts, and I love watching them grow in confidence and, and in being so brave to go before a group, and they just learn so many things. Right now, we have about 15 students. Our goal by Christmas is to have 50 students. The cost is nominal. We pay $15 a month, and that money goes to pay the instructor. So I hope you'll come out on Mondays and uh, bring your children just for a trial to see if they like it. And I guarantee you they will, and I guarantee you that this will serve them so well in the future. Hope to see you here. Take care. Hello, this is Cedric Mitchell, and watch me on Tax Tips right here on New Way to Live. So, when you look at uh, America, um, it's a history of gangs. You, you, you're from New York. You, you know about the gangs of New York, the early New Yorkers, and when they came here. Um, how they, the different ethnic groups, had gangs, all of them. Because of poverty, they had to use the resources of what was left. Most time in, a, in, in, in this country, what was left was um, illicit activities. Whether it was gambling, drugs, uh, violent, uh, uh, prostitution, uh, uh, gambling, uh, all those types of things. Uh, were part of gangs, and as you know, some of the most the most prominent families in this country uh, were part of either the Irish gangs, the Italian gangs, the Jewish gangs, the Asian gangs. The, the, but they took it in the generational growth. Their children were able to move into another level, and so therefore they become prominent citizens. That's that's the story of America. So now let's fast forward. Um, 
doing slavery. Uh, the Ku Klux, the, before the Ku Klux Klan, but the, the, the Night Riders uh, were used as police. Um, and many times they called them vigilante gangs. And whenever any African was uh, trying to get, um, obtain freedom, they were automatically deputized. There was, they were automatically the police. Whether they were the police or not, they always was the police. Even the, the history of bounty hunters, okay, they operated the part of gangs. There were some movies recently, I think one of them was called The Underground. Have you seen Roots lately? I mean, you see any of these movies, you see where the gangs come together and they go hunt people and then they bring them back for the bounty money. I mean, anybody can get together and and, and hunt somebody and they get a reward. So my point of it is that, that we all have grown up on these, these, these pictures. Now, there came a point in time when um, the movement among African, African Americans, who really we have not historically had a love affair with, with guns. Uh, however, that growing up particularly in the urban areas, you know, places like Columbus and places like that, and other southern uh, cities is the northern major cities where the the gangs were prominent, and so that gang culture really evolved because of the the racism in the south. Basically, you had the marauders of the Ku Klux Klan, and then you had uh, the African Americans who organized in groups. There was one group out in Louisiana, matter of fact, called the Deacons for Defense. I have a movie about that. Where well, they these people organized themselves. Uh, at one point or another, there were different members of the Masonic organizations who organized themselves in a certain kind of game for self-defense, and so therefore that emerged in the South. So when we look at today's games, they were modeled after the early games, uh, the Irish games, the Italian games, the Jewish games, uh, the, the, the the Russian games, and of course the Latino games, the Hispanic games. So the, the gun was an equalizer. So therefore, powerless people saw how guns are used. The Second Amendment, is it? Talks about, what, possession of firearms, right? Now, today, one of the big issues in our political process is whether or not they're trying to take our guns. Because even people who are, have privilege feel uncomfortable, they're fighting under certain people's banner to keep the guns. So why wouldn't powerless people get guns? Now the other part of it is this. Um, you have a situation where guns in disadvantaged communities become premium. You can go right now, I got a call yesterday. They say you can go to some pawn shops here in Columbus, Georgia and you can get an AK-47, you can get a Uzi, you can get anything you want, all you do is be 18. Did you know that in today's society, your credit score is like a vital sign in the hospital? It's being monitored at all times. If not by you, certainly someone else is monitoring your credit. It can have various impacts over your life. It can impact your insurance premiums as well as your interest rates. You can be denied the ability to rent a home, purchase a car, get a credit card, or even more, you can be denied employment. Did you know that over the course of your lifetime, less than an excellent credit rating could cost you over $150,000? 20% of credit reports have errors on them causing lower credit scores. But did you know this? The Fair Credit Reporting Act gives all Americans, including you, the right to dispute and or investigate any item on their credit report. Inaccurate, erroneous, or obsolete items such as late payments, charge-offs, foreclosures, judgments, repossessions, bankruptcies, tax liens, collections, short sales, medical bills, and many other items can be removed from your credit file or can be updated to reflect 
pay as agreed. Hey, you don't have a minute to waste. Call me today at 706-366-5520. Again, that's 706-366-5520. Let's get started increasing your credit score. Jamaya Bush, and I'm 11 years old. I've been on this dance team for two years, and I want to be a dance instructor, and I'm a captain for a girl's dance. Hello, my name is Sylvester Jenkins, pastor of Passover Ministries, and you're watching The Way to Live. Join us on this broadcast as we talk about life skills. God bless you. To get a gun. So now the issue becomes there's a flood of guns into the uh, impoverished communities. Now you have children. But then let's, let's go a little bit farther. The entertainment. At one point, back in the 70s, if you listen at the entertainment, when I say entertainment, <clears throat> I mean music, uh, rap was not a big deal then. It was singing, R&B, blues, jazz. But then we, they came into what we call hip-hop. Now, when hip hop took place, that was a music of community coming together. And of course, those of you from New York or, or from that part of the country know that, that that was something that grandmama would be out on the stoop, the kids would be out there uh, uh, dancing, uh, they have the record players out there doing, doing the, the, the things with the records and uh, break dancing. And, you know, but, but what happened was there was certain powers that be who began a little little uncomfortable because it didn't quite make the money that they wanted to make because it was kind of homegrown but then there was a there was an edge that's always been there and that is what we call the gangster rap and gangster rap basically and it was with the name came as an imitation of what they had been seeing on TV Scarface among young people, one of the, the big time influences, the Godfather was some of the early influences. Then you had the gangsters, and, 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 and you see the whole dynamic of those things taking place. Uh, we can see many of the karate movies, uh, again, the gangs. And, and so therefore, young people growing up in impoverished areas, and this coincides with the mass incarceration of African American men because of the involvement of drugs. And because that became the economic um, uh, uh, incentive throughout the community, then it became fights, and then people fell down into uh, various uh, gangs. Now, many people might not realize, but for example, the Crips, the Bloods, and uh, the GDs and others, many of them uh, really were byproducts of the breakup and destruction of the Black Panther Party. Hello, I'm Cedric Mitchell, and today we're going to talk about getting an estimate during tax time. You definitely want to get an estimate during tax time. It's very important to shop around, but it's also very important to keep your identity and your secure information safe. When doing an estimate with any tax company, you do not need your full social, your full date of birth, or any of your pertinent information as with your employer. So feel free to get an estimate, but make sure you shop around safely. Um, the year of birth, Social Security card, Social Security is not required, so be careful when getting Social Security cards and W-2s because there are many tax offices out here that are legitimate, but there are also many that are not. And what they will do is e-file your return as soon as you leave, even though you haven't signed any documentation. A lot of people don't know that the IRS will only take a Social Security number for you or a dependent once. So be careful when you shop around and be safe. Hello, my name is Tilford Thomas of Thomas Computers, and you're watching New Way to Live Networks.
that, that what start off as, and many of these groups start off as, as means of protecting the community, doing goodwill in the community, but then because of the influx of drugs and the poor economic conditions, therefore it became warfare over survival. Now, because of that warfare over survival, we have a situation where people begin to exploit it. They started having what they call, as I mentioned before, gangster rap. In this, in this entertainment, it, it, it was misogynistic. We talked about females. It was talked about a glorified violence. Okay? And young people were given millions of dollars to push out more and more of this type of trash. To push real hip-hop to the side. Okay? So then, as a result of that, you had uh, people like, you no know, infamous people, you know, like uh, Tupac and Biggie. The, the, the kind of the, the, the prime prime suspect, so to speak, in, in relating to how the, the entertainment had become basically a place to breed a new type of social culture for young people. And it also represented a way of, of how to get out of, of uh, economic uh, depravity. Now, as a result of that, people put more money in and, they, and young people were lining up showing them they could be more vicious than the next one. They could be uglier than the next one. And they were rewarded for that. So as a result of that, now we have this gun violence. Young people are using it. They have video games. And I think one is called Grand Theft Auto. And as you know, most of the video games have to do with shooting and killing. And this was what young people are, are involved with. I was talking with a, of a, of a young man earlier today. And we're just saying that when we were children, our parents punished us by keeping us in the house. You know, you can't go outside. But today, you want to punish a child, you make them go outside. Tell them you, you want to take their Xbox away from them. But what are most of the games on the Xbox? The games of what? Of violence. So therefore, Hollywood, uh, the gov former governor of California, We'll get his name now. But he and Bruce Willis and the rest of the guy, uh, Cigar, what are they doing? Popular violence. Okay, guns. Okay? So that's really helpful, but I was trying to get a better understanding because you have a lot of experience here, you know, helping people, uh, former gang leaders. Right. So I'm curious like how accessible it is, you know. To get a gun, you were mentioning, you know, the flooding of guns into, you know, the impoverished community. Mm -hmm. So, if you can explain that to the audience, you know, how easy, how how easy, easy it is to get a gun that's in Columbus. Yeah. It's very easy. You have teenagers selling guns. People, because what the, the business is this: uh, people will rob people houses, and they're looking for guns. They take the guns and they sell them. It's an economy. Now, mind you, gun shows have been selling illegal guns and been a part of the gun movement in this country for years, okay? So now they're imitating, okay, the same process on the streets. They rob, get guns, uh, they break into stores to get guns or whatever, then they will sell them for money, okay? And that's how, and th that's what happens. Now that's another thing that, 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 that really makes it sort of, sort of very, very dangerous. And that's because children are getting a gun and they are not mature enough to say, well, I'm going to be selective about, they want to shoot a gun. Because remember the video games that they play, they are teaching them how to do what? How to shoot guns. So they want to shoot guns. That's what they do. And so human life, in addition to the conditions under which they live, in addition to their ready availability of weapons and guns, then therefore, to put them in children's hands, it's like putting an automobile in a child's hand. It becomes a weapon. So therefore, as opposed to something that was used for a, a family's defense, now it's being used for offense. I can rob you. I can scare you because you offended me. You said something to my girlfriend. Or you said something to me. Or as a matter of fact, because I also might be on drugs, okay, I might be offended by just you looking at me. And if you don't look at me right, I'm going to shoot you. Because it's not a big deal because I go into the YDC. I've been in there. So therefore, I don't mean myself personally, I mean the young people, that's what they say. I've been in the YDC, I go in there again, okay? Prison has been glorified. That's how you earn your reputation on the streets. Because, again, in my day, 
Okay, we dressed up. And that was the standard way you went to school. These days, you dress down. So therefore, the whole point is that the more like a gangster or like a thug you, you look and act, you're rewarded for that. Because they've seen in the entertainment that this is what people get movie roles for. This is what people get uh, nice houses, nice cars, nice adornments around their necks. Go to the best parties, the prettier girls, want to want to be with the guys that have all the jewels and go and throw the best parties. So now you have a, a, a subculture of, of depravity that has evolved around drugs, uh, extravagance, violence, and guns. Hi, my name is Felicia L. Hamilton and you're watching New Way to Live TV. Thank you, that's extremely helpful. And do you have more questions you want to ask? And it doesn't have to be in a video, but you, you mentioned gun shows because it so happens we're doing this story about the gun buyback program on Sunday. And there's a, a big gun show down <laughs> convention, the, the Trade Center right, right. this weekend. Right, right. Starting on Friday, which right. is just amazing because you have on one side of town people trying to go buy back guns, and then the other side of town people selling guns. Yeah, and the, and the thing about it, with, with the gun with the with the gun show, what they realize that when they come to town, they have the gun show, but they also have the, the side gun show that they go in certain areas, uh, in circles of people, from these militias or gangs, and these militias are trading guns. Okay, that that's what they uh, the guy that tore down the bomb the uh, Oklahoma uh, building out there in Oklahoma City. Okay, and I won't even get into how he got those guns. I'm sure with a little research you would know. But my point is that that's a game. The militias are games. You have motorcycle games. And all of them, so, so all around these young people are games. And the games, it didn't start in the American African community. They inherited this game culture. And the, and the IRA, is, a, is it IRA? NRA. NRA. The NRA are the ones who are perpetuating this type of culture of a dependency and a glorification of guns. Yeah, thank you. That's all my questions. Do you have a more, any more questions? Yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. all set. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. Hello, my name is Juan Lane, and thank you for tuning in to this station, New Way to Live. Listen, we can't do it without your help. We need you to send your donations in today. This is how this station operates, and we're trying to do the very best for you and your family with the production that we have. We are really giving it our all, but we cannot continue it without your financial support. So please, send your offerings in to P.O. Box 3615. Columbus, Georgia, 363193, in, in care of, of New Way to Live. And we'll make sure that we get it on so we can keep this great program going. If you and your family are enjoying it, we pray that you continue to, to, to we pray that you send us an a, a offering that we can continue it and, and do the very best for you. Um, also, make sure that you watch our uh, public education program. This is a very special program where it can help you prepare for your next test, the public education program, right here on New Way to Live. Thank you. Did you know that the majority of people have no will, trust, or power of attorney? What will happen to your children, property, or other assets? If you can't make decisions for yourself, who will know your wishes? Will the appropriate people know where to find all of your personal and financial documentations and information? Well, we have a program developed by attorneys to complete at your own pace from the comfort of your home.
You can update this program as needed with no add-ons or surprise fees. You can secure all of your important information in this virtual password protected safety deposit box with easy to use services and client support system available. Please call me today at 706-366-5520. Again, call me today at 706-366-5520. I hope to hear from you soon.